it's here finally. We're getting ready to start selling the beaver. We found a guy up in Michigan to make them for us at a reasonable cost, and unfortunately, he, he made about half of what we wanted and quit. So the other, almost all the other half we got, and I had to finish it myself, that's why it's a d delay. So I will have 47 units for sale. Now the plan is to kick this off on July the 4th. Now, you know, plans are subject to change. It depends on what happens, but I have the 47 units ready to go. Got boxes, bubble wrap, and all that kind of crap, and the, uh, the website, woodwhirler.com, will tell you all the details and what you get and what you don't get. The one thing you will not get is I have not been able to locate anybody to build handles. Uh, we're still looking, and hopefully we'll find somebody, but, you know, they just... Uh, you know, they're really proud of their work, and I can understand that. Everybody has to make a living, but at the same time, I'd like to deliver a, a product to you guys that's, you know, is worth the money. I mean, that's just all it is to it. I mean, people just, you know, they, these tools, some of them are just outrageous, and I hope that uh, the pricing range I'm going to put mine in, you'll think is fair. But anyway, here's the deal. No handles. I made three handles for the beaver, and the beaver's attached to them, and I made them in three different materials, and the purpose be to show people, you know, how you can, you know, you know, make your handles, and even if you don't have the right materials, you can, you can find a way. So we'll start off, now this is, this is the, this one is honey locust, and really hard stuff, as you know, and this is really what, you know, the preferred type of deal. I, I like them long. I believe this is the right day at 21 inches because this puts a lot of torque. This is one of the new beavers right here. It's one of the ones, and uh, I don't have the cutter or the screw on it. But there's the first handle. Now I'm going to show you how I made that. And now this handle, this is a patriotic handle. It has a uh, solid pair core from here to here. And then, of course, you've got the epoxy and I attempted to put some uh, aluminum shavings in it, but they uh, they were too heavy, I guess, and they soaked to the bottom, but it turned out all right. So this is a very comfortable handle. It's also a long one. And the final one right here, the third one, this one is, this is pallet wood right here. So I just took some boards off an old pallet I had out there, planed them down, glued them together. Now the reason they got the walnut in here is because uh, I didn't have enough pallet boards to make them big enough so I could cut these into it. So what I did is I, I glued uh, walnut inserts in here, and this has a 3 inch steel rod inside about that long. So that, you know, because I was afraid, you know, it might break, because you know, these things do give up. Now this one right here, that's sort of decorative, but it's sort of, uh, somebody cut the wrong end off of this thing when they was making this one. So in order to salvage it, somebody had to put this in. So uh, this is, you know, good hard oak. And I'm going to show you how I make this one too. And what the deal is, I'm going to give these away as promotional to the first person that buys one, to the tenth person that buys one, and to the twentieth person that buys one. Now, the way you get one of these is when you pay for it on PayPal, put it in the comments which one you would prefer to have. So the deal is that, you know, the first guy gets his choice of all three, second guy gets his choice of the two remainder, and the third guy, our, our lady, I'm sorry, uh, she will get, he, she, they will get the remaining one. These all have my logo and epoxy in, in the bottom. And now the video is going to start, and I'm going to show you how I made these three. It's going to sort of alternate, but the principle is going to be the same. A little helter-skelter. You know me. I don't script anything. I just go and blow. So there you are. All right. You know, we, like I, I just got done discussing, I'm going to make uh, three beaver handles. Each one of them is going to be 20 inches long, and I'm going to make uh, all three of them out of uh, different, different materials. And I'm going to show you how to okay, prepare them all. Gonna be, uh, I found a bunch of pieces of uh, old pallet wood here. And what I'm going to do it is I'm going to plane it down and glue it all together to make a blank. Now, uh, 
That's probably about the easiest thing to come across in case you have a shortage of wood. You can go almost behind any factory and and they'll give you a pallet or two and you can tear them down. Now there's, there's two kinds of pallets. They're beginning to make the pallets out of pine. You really don't want pine. Uh, most of them are made out of oak and they're uh, you know, well seasoned and they're hard and all that kind of stuff. So you know you if you can't if you don't have a plane basically you can just take a block of rough sandpaper and get all the high spots together and clamp the living you know what out of them and put them all together and you'll be fine. It'll, it'll be fine. It may show a little bit more of a you know where the lines are than it will if you plane them, but that'd be fine. Okay, the second one I'm going to make is going to be it's going to be a mixture of uh, epoxy and uh, and wood. Now this is a piece of honey locust right here. You can see that. I got it cut down to 21 inches long, and that speaks for itself. I'm just going to turn a handle out of that. Well, I thought I'd bring you up to date on where I'm at. I did a couple things uh, off camera, just getting things ready. Uh, this is my uh, honey locust. I'm going to make a handle out of this, and you know, you may say, well, why such a big piece? Well, I wanted to get below the sapwood. See right here? I wanted to get below the sapwood with it, with an all real hard piece of wine. So what I've done to get this ready for prep, or well for turning, is I've drilled the, I've drilled it this end. I use a one and three quarter inch Forrester bit and drill a big hole. And the purpose of that, I'm going to do this on all three of them, is when the handle's basic is done. Well, I'm going to take my logo, which I cut out of a business card and I'm going to coat this with poly and then I'm going to put it in here like this and uh, pour some clear epoxy over it. Hopefully that'll work. Now, uh, the other thing is I took a one inch forester bit and drilled right in the center and whoever stole it or wherever it went, oh it's still in here. Okay, the drive center, you can see I've already pounded it in there so it fits real good. And it's, it's in the tailstock here. So this will go on the tailstock. And here I, I went ahead and, and got me a starter hole right here in the center. And I've got a half inch drill bit on there. Now this drill bit is five inches long. The tang on the beaver is four inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill about a four and a half inch hole right here. Uh, in the end of each one of them. And I, I always do that before I start turning. And then when I start turning, I flip it around and the end of the hole becomes on the live center and then this is the drive. And I, the reason I do that, all this safety stuff here is that I turn fast. I will probably turn this, uh, depending on how out of balance it is, probably in the neighborhood of about 2,000 RPM. So I do not want it coming out, and there's no way that it will come out like this. I do this with all my between center stuff. I mean, every, everything I turn between center, that's my practice. So when you get around to it, and I'll, I'll video a little bit of it, I'm going to drill a hole in this. Okay, now, the next thing I did is the one that I'm going to pour right here. I took that little bitty piece of pear and put it aside and I went out here and got me a bigger one. And the reason I wanted that is because the base of it I want to be on the outside of this with a lip that fits just inside perfectly so to keep it centered. So that's the reason for that. And of course I will you know, drill the holes and all that stuff. So the other thing as far as the pallet wood's concerned, it's over there. I hadn't got around to it. But it's a company out of Russia emailed me and they wanted me to do a review on their speed cutter, grass speed cutter. Uh, it's, I think they said it's Belarus. But all this stuff is in Russia. Russian, I guess, or some kind of language. I can't make heads or tails of it. Anyway, they got a website. Speedcutter.com, I think. I don't see it on here anywhere. Uh, it might be on here, but I can't read it. Let me see if it's on this 
I just need an instruction sheet like I need an instruction sheet. Uh, it's a graph, G-R-A-F-F, speed cutter. There it is, www.speedcuttergraph.com. I'll put, I'll put it, I'll put it in the, uh, on the video somewhere so you know where to go to. But anyway, what I'm going to do, this piece of wood, and this is what I'm, I'm going to use it for, and I, you know, I had to change so I would see how it's got all these little limbs on here. I'm just going to use it to knock them off with, and uh, I've already got it set up right here. I hadn't even whirled, whirled it up any, but I'm sure it'll work. But this is a basically, whoa, hold on there, Larry. Get this out of the way. All right, that goes better. Basically, what I'm going to do is just trim all this stuff up here, and. Uh, that's what I'm going to use it for. I don't know if you guys probably can't even see me here. Put it, I go and put it in a vise and, and so I can hold it better. But you get the idea. It looks like it cuts, but uh, that's what I'll, I'll do with it. I'll go ahead and I'll probably go ahead and just knock all this whole thing off right here. And, uh, and then we'll be ready to turn it. So that's where we're at right now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and drill this hole right here. Uh, and now I'll set this aside and we'll I'll work on something. I'm going to be trying to do like three of them at one time, which, you know, I probably could have three videos. I'm thinking people might not want to see that many handles built in one time. I like to put the drill bit in the headstock. And... Uh, I don't know if, I, if these will work or not this time, but I got a great big old piece of channel locks here, and I like to use them to hold it. Yeah, it'll work because this is this this honey locust is some hard stuff, and I'm not sure I can hold it with my hands. In fact, I'm pretty sure I can't. So I'm gonna go ahead. We'll go ahead and drill this one out, and we'll set it aside, or at least we'll, we'll attempt to drill it out. You own some gloves here. Haven't got my big fan on yet, but I can tell you right now I'm gonna need it. Gonna be humid today at hot. Like 90. Humidity 180. Yeah, that's not quite right, but at least 80%. Make sure all these are turned off. Alright. And I'm gonna go down here to this speed control. So let's see what we got here, and make sure this is locked down. Don't need that locked down. And grab hold of it right here. I wish it's open just a little bit more now. It might be better. And we're gonna start it right here. I can just tell the way it feels as well. All right, that's how you do it. Okay, I'm armor plated. So let's whirl this thing up a little bit. There you go. Oh, it's got some whoppy do in the center, don't it? You know, I think I'm going to take that out first. I'm going to come over here and get this whoppy do out right here. Right there. Get over and get it. Boom, 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 boom. How handy is that, my friends? How handy is that? 
is all right. Let's have to check it here. Turn it over to the right side. We're going to get it. Tighten that rascal down. Tighten that rascal down and whirl it up. Well, first I gotta go to the girls' room. Well, this could be an adventure, my friends. Uh, two inch PVC pipe, uh, one inch plug in the center. Uh, I got it marked in thirds here. It's going to be red, white, and blue. And I'm going to mix some aluminum shavings into it. I've got the inside of the PVC pipe coated with Pam. And it's glued down so it don't leak. I got my red dye, my white dye, and somewhere in this mess, hopefully I've got some blue. It's the next morning. Uh, before I get started, uh, I want to tell you something here that might help you, it might not. I've got a little bit of this epoxy left here. I'm going to go ahead and finish using it, but then I'm going to go to uh, Total Boat. Total Boat contacted me and asked me, you know, if I was interested in a sponsorship. I told them I was, uh, but uh, the thing about it is, I had a choice of me making money or you saving money, and I chose to let you save money. You can go to TotalBoat.com and put in my coupon code, which is WORDLER20, and you get 20% off of their already lowest prices around. And the only thing I get out of it is that they give me some epoxy when, when and if I need it. That's it. But, you know, I've told you before, I'm not in this stuff for the money. So if I can help people out, that's just great. All right, let's pour it in and see how much of a mess I can make here. Made a pretty good one yesterday. So, there we are. Uh, gonna go start turning, start turning one of those uh, colored blanks now. I'll catch you in the other room.
All right, I got this other one out of the uh, clamps. I didn't, I didn't have enough pallet wood. I had a couple of pallets out there, but they're all covered up, and I'm too lazy to take everything off. Big old logs. But anyway, it turned out to be one and three quarter by one and three quarter, which is fine for the handle. But I like to put a knob right here. Uh, I like my handles to be about one and a half inches because I got big hands. So I, I found this in my scrap pile, piece of walnut. I got a screw in the center of it and some epoxy. So I'll let that sit up for a while and I'll make my knob out of epoxy. And uh, that, that really looks good. I mean, it's nice and tight and pretty different kinds of wood here. So first, uh, first though, I'm going to go ahead with this uh, parallel. The reason, reason I got one is so big is because I, I want the uh, old heartwood, so sap, sap wood comes down to about right here, see? So I want to cut it down. So I've got this pounded in. It's in a one inch recess. So I'll go ahead and put it in here. Bring this up to here. And also, I also drilled a, uh, using a step drill, drilled sort of a cone hole in this end. And the reason I do that is because something about flying logs I don't like. Now, this, the way this is done, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just virtually impossible for it to come out of here. I mean, you know, it would have to break in two. Uh, I like to turn fast, so it, uh, you know, if it came off at the speed I like to turn, I could get hurt. And nobody likes me better than me. Before we get started too much, I wanted to uh, run this by you. I went ahead and uh, cut my ferrules, uh, cut three of them out of that uh, copper tubing. But, you know, I, I'm getting ready to turn it so I need to know what size. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this done. I'll smooth this up later. I'm, I'm, I may make it a little smaller. Like I said, I got big hands. This is, these are not for me.
bounce on me here. wood wheel shrink. All right. And when it does, that will be loose. So just plan on when you epoxy your tool in that you epoxy that also. I got this uh, pallet wood thing out of the blank, I mean out of the clamps, and I didn't have enough pallet wood to make it as thick as I wanted to, so, you know, I wanted to put a, a hump right here where, you know, the hand was, and then, uh, you see this one here? Dumbass me cut the wrong end when I was making that one, so now i got to fix this one. And the tang comes down here about four, four and a half inches all together. So I can't run a rod. So I got found some scrap walnut, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue a piece into there with a rod going in a little bit, a little three inch rod, and uh, then I'm gonna put this one, another scrap, and it's gonna go in here, and I'll epoxy them all together and glue it tied together. It's going to end up being about 21 inches long, but that's all right. Looking good, looking good. And I'll be back. We're gonna do some more epoxy over on this side now. Back up, you know, three going at one time. All right, gonna mix up some more. This is the uh, honey, honey locust one. Keep you off a little bit. It still set up. It just takes a little longer, or, or makes it a little quicker. One, one or the other. Doing it for years. I always use a swag on something like this. It's just too hard to measure. All right, first thing we're going to do. your ferro long because you know the wood and stuff shrinks you ought to put it on the inside of your uh, ferro rather than there so that way it doesn't squeeze out and run down now we're going to get a paper towel so I keep my hands but you notice I roughed it all up here but the ones you get will be roughed up too I'm going to do this right here This time I mix too much. Which one way ahead and this other, I guess. That's all I got to use for, so I need at least inches or guarantee it. This gets in. I think the battery run down the last time when I did all this. Uh, I got some voids right here. I got to get out. It's uh, trying to chip on me.
All right, there's the fix right there. Uh, corn starch and CA glue. I mean, it goes into those places like you wouldn't believe. And it comes out hard as a rock. And so what, it's got a little white speck here and there. That's just sort of, that's what this is all about. But you can take a spot like this right here. It would be a void right there, not hardly anything. And just touch it with a little bit of CA. And that's done. Well, I got the last one on. I'm going to turn it a little bit. I don't know how well it'll turn out because it got a little crooked on me. But we'll see. We always start over. I'm going to turn it about a grand here. Well, all three of them's done. So here they are. So if you want to hang in there for maybe another week or two, you're going to see an introductory video where you can buy yourself your very own beaver. And this is going to show you how to make handles. And uh, you better pay attention. I'm only going to have a limited supply. And they, when they go, they're gone. All right. Uh, Subscribe, give me a like, call your mama, and I'll catch you on the rebound.